is Madre o Santo. Her communicants are the children of Hurema. The canons of demonology tell us that the great beast, Pan, or Satan, teaches his witches to dance like trained animals. Only here we haven't to do with the demon at all, but Christ, son of God, and his lieutenant Ogum, or St. George. The point couldn't be made more clearly. In the tensions of religious ecstasy, the rites of magic glide imperceptibly from God to Satan and back again, from the white angels to the black. A Jurema é muito linda, com seu capacete de pena. Chama a Jurema, chama a Jurema. Vem na boca, chama a Jurema. For them, worship is necessarily the worship of the church of their Portuguese conquerors. But the expression of religious feeling is the frenzy of the Afro-pagan orgy, the trance-like identification with the natural world of trees and animals, the submerging of the higher consciousness and conscience into a rush of instinctive drive. Possession, whether by Ogum St. George or the great beast himself, remains a physiological fact. In all cases, the characteristic features of the possessed are the same. Contortion of the body, facial swelling, the fixity of the eye, bloodless pricks from a needle. The same set of symptoms, incidentally, which were regarded as conclusive proof at the witch trials of the 17th century, a condition for which you could roast at the stake. Ai, que me deve me paga na porta do cemitério. Those witches are dead. This is Macumba, he who opens the gates of cemeteries. Macumba, who in a different guise desecrated the Victorian solemnity of Highgate Cemetery in London, now presides in the dancing candlelight on the shores of Brazil. <laughs> The spirits are hungry, and it is their right, a terrifying right, to feast on the food of the living. They won't be satisfied with a chalice of wine and a wafer. Macumba is a gourmet. His children will be possessed of evil to the electrifying screech of the cock. <laughs> Life and death, sex and exaltation fuse into a timeless dimension. Possession intensifies as the features of animals stamp themselves upon the faces and the bodies of the worshippers. The night air carries the stench of flames, food, sex, and an acrid, unnatural sweat. Delirium. There's the cock. The beast has choked out all his humanity, leaving only the excited animal behind.
Every morning in Serra d'Arce, near Salerno in Italy, Giuseppina Gonella sits in her private chapel, possessed of the spirit of the glorious Alberto, her nephew killed years ago in front of the house. Giuseppina speaks with the voice of Alberto from beyond the grave and the faithful villagers flock in from all the rural districts to hear her to be comforted. It is a scene very like the one witnessed by their ancestors, the humble cultivators from the Greek and Roman Campania who trooped in to listen to the Sibyl or to the utterance of an oracle. object, in this case the truck which killed Glorious Alberto, has given life to a relationship which no succeeding civilization could obscure. It is significant that the cults of Adonis and Mithras, the pagan god heroes, equally young victims of tragic fateful accidents, were for the early Christian church the toughest to eradicate of all the cults in the south of Italy. Among these country folk who tend the flames of natural religion, the barriers of doubt and rationalism crumble before the massed onslaught of blind, rock-rooted faith. <laughs> 